Hello and welcome to Shine Chats. My name is Brian Brady. I'm the Senior Director of Sales for the Henry Shine Special Markets Group. And we are coming to you from the famous Chandelier Bar at the Cosmopolitan Hotel of Las Vegas. And today I am joined by uh, Brian Kaleo, who is the Director of the DSO Industry Group at Dykema. Uh, Brian has been a great friend to our company for many years. Uh, he produces and Dykema produces a phenomenal summer DSO event, very similar to the DSO event we're producing here in Las Vegas at the Cosmopolitan. And Brian is a luminary in the space, knows the space very well, knows a lot about the transitions happening between private practice and group practice, uh, private practice to DSO, mergers, acquisitions, legal, regulatory. So many questions that I have for you, uh, Brian, during the Shine Chats. But first, uh, introduce yourself, tell us a little, little bit about Dykema, the services that you provide to group practices and DSOs, and also for private practices that contact you, interested in your advice and, and navigating the waters to get into the group practice and DSO space. Well, Brian, first, thanks for having me uh, at this wonderful first class event here at this world famous, iconic location. I really appreciate that. But for those that don't know, my name's Brian Kaleo. I'm the director of Dykema's DSO industry group. We represent over 350 group practices and DSOs in all 50 states on everything from regulatory compliance structure to a broad range of compliance issues to strategic counseling on buying, selling, investing, lending into the space. That's, That's kind great. of what we do. Many private practice dentists, and I've been with Shine for over 15 years, and used to work more, more in the private practice space, and, and now for the last almost four years, I work in the group practice and DSO space. Uh, even today, many private practices are uh, confounded by what's happening in the, in the DSO space and the group practice space, wondering, should I start to talk to groups or DSOs and, and let them make me offers for my practice? And is it the right time to sell to a group practice or a DSO? For those private practice dentists asking themselves the question, uh, you know, is it time to jump on the bandwagon? Do I start opening myself up to talk? What are your advice to private practice dentists based on the fact that they're hearing all of this activity going on and they're curious themselves what to do? Well, first and foremost, you need to understand the marketplace and what's happening. And there is a great evolution and a great consolidation in dentistry going on. And the evolution is from single practices to group practices and then group practices to DSOs. And first step, I would say, is understanding that that is going on and eventually all we're going to have is DSOs. Uh, whether you jump on the bandwagon or do it right now is still largely a personal choice. I mean, I'm privileged to be speaking tomorrow in part about how to maximize the value of your organization. So, you know, it, it, de it depends on your organization and where you are as to whether you make a move right now, but the key is you have to understand the great evolution, the great consolidation, and you have to be thinking in, t in, in those terms and, and, and it, so at least you can be prepared because inevitably, Brian, everybody is going to have to make a move sooner or later to a DSO type structure. Why is the industry, uh, dentistry, evolving towards this DSO model? Yeah, the, the, the primary reason is dentistry has proven to be recession proof and it has attracted extreme interest from non-dentist investors, but under the corporate practice of dentistry regulations, uh, non-dentists cannot own dental practices. So the only way they can participate in this really stellar uh, overperforming industry is through the DSO model. The DSO model allows participation of non-dentists. So when you see these terms thrown around, a DSO bought a dental practice, they really didn't didn't buy the practice because they can't do that under the rules, but they formed a DSO and they now manage the practice and contractually affiliated the practice. Got it. And talk to us about some of the benefits of a, of a DSO model. Yeah, I mean, the primary benefits right now are it allows for the participation of non-dentist investors, which leads to oversized returns in this marketplace right now. You're getting multiples that you won't see in other industries. Another benefit is succession planning. Right now, if a dentist dies or becomes disabled, he or she can only fire sale their practice at a steep discount. Under the DSO model, you can pass it along to your heirs and beneficiaries. And then the last benefit is under the new tax code, as you know, Brian, we have a brand new tax code, there's going to be more favorable tax treatment for DSO models. That's great. 
You talked a little bit about multiples. Uh, that question comes up all the time. A lot from private practice owners, but the topic of multiples also comes up oftentimes by group practice owners, dentists that own two, three, four locations. Um, and I'm, I notice that when we're talking emerging group practices or emerging DSOs, you know, 10 locations, um, they're constantly talking about multiples. In May 2018, what is a private practice seeing today in terms of multiples when they're purchased from another private practitioner or purchased from an emerging DSO or purchased from a large national DSO? Well, Brian, the first thing is there's lots of opportunities available, so it depends on the opportunity. If you're a solo practice and you're selling to a DSO, you can get a five to seven times multiple generally. If you're a group practice, you've gone through the, the you, you've put the work in in your five or ten locations, and you might be eligible for a private equity deal where a private equity group acquires you, and it's not uncommon to see double digit multiples in those cases, 10, 11, 12, even, even 14 in some cases. And a lot of that has to do with the quality of the practice, yeah. um, how streamlined they are, the technology that they have in the practice, the software. That's why we're always talking to private practices and emerging DSOs about the importance of streamlining across your locations and making sure you've got connected software, enterprise software, whether it's on the cloud or, or, with, a, or with, with a hardwired server. Integration is very, very important. Integration. So is payer mix yep. for, for the question of what multiple are we going to get. Are you integrated? Do you have a single platform? And uh, what's your payer mix like? The more Medicaid, the lower the multiple, the less Medicaid, the higher the multiple. Got it. And the multiples, for those that don't know, are of the EBITDA. Explain That's EBITDA for those that haven't dove into the whole multiple language, uh, multiple yeah, I mean, conversation before. E EBITDA is the gold standard for valuing a practice um, or practices, uh, you know, across a group practice. You can have a $1 million practice that costs $600,000 to operate and the EBITDA will be $400,000. You could have a $2 million practice that costs $1.8 million to operate and the EBITDA is $200,000. So in that example, the $1 million practice is more valuable than the $2 million practice. EBITDA is the gold standard for making that calculation and getting to the actual value of the organization. Makes sense. Where do you see multiples going? in the next you know, one, two, three years? Staying steady, increasing, decreasing, because so much is happening? In a short time frame, I think they're going to stay steady. Over the long haul, I think some of the crazy multiples, the 14s, the 15s, they're probably going to come down. But honestly, the five to seven multiples that you're seeing right now, I think are here to stay. I think they're very solid. There's a solid foundation behind them. I don't think they're going to go away. Some of the much higher ones may, may come back down to earth. Got it. Give us sort of your quintessential client. Who contacts Dykema, who contacts you, uh, and, and tell us a little bit about the services that you provide to, the, to a private practice versus perhaps an emerging DSO. You know, we have a very deep bench, Brian, and a very deep team, so we represent all size DSOs from startups to emerging to very, very large organizations. Uh, we also, uh, you know, represent private equity groups that want to buy, sell, invest, or lend. But for this audience, which is primarily uh, practices or group practices, we represent any size. We have a team member that's skilled to represent any size, whether it's a one or two uh, office or whether it's a 10, 15, 20, or 300. Great. Um, what are you look most looking forward to being here in Vegas for the DSO Education Forum this weekend? You know, e education and networking. I mean, the opportunity to get up there and speak and uh, provide information that I think is very valuable to the attendees as to making their decision as to how to best per, you know, position their organization for future growth and success, and then also just to meet people. You've got, I think if I remember correctly, over 500 people here. Such a great event. I'm just looking forward to networking and meeting people. That's great, and you are uh, one of our uh, esteemed speakers speaking in both our national DSO track and our emerging DSO track. We're really looking forward to that. Um, we, and you were correct, we have almost 600, we have almost 600 uh, total attendees at this meeting. We've got about 140 uh, group practices and DSOs between the US and Canada. We have about 25 private practices coming, those that are in one and two locations. And to the audience that didn't get to make it here to Las Vegas uh, at the Cosmopolitan for the DSO Education Forum this year, we're turning this into an annual event not just for DSOs. You don't have to own a DSO or a group practice to come to this. This is also a, a meeting that's really conducive to private practices to learn more about the space. And as Mr. Kaleo said, networking is key here. Uh, this is a phenomenal two-day event, which we're going to repeat every May in Las Vegas. 
and the website www.dsoeducationforum.com will have info on, right now the info is on this year's event, but soon, probably in about 30 days, uh, we will update it for info on next year's event. And what is the website that our viewers can go to to get more information on the Dykema Summer uh, event, which this year is taking place in Dallas? Yeah, DykemaDSO.com, D-Y-K-E-M-A-D-S-O.com. It's going to be a great event in July. Henry Shine's uh, going to be one of our huge strategic partners, I believe the CEO's going to be our keynote speaker. So we're really, really excited about the event and about Henry Schein's participation in the event. Yeah, our, our chairman and CEO, Stan Bergman, is uh, the keynote speaker at Dykema Summer Event. Really looking forward to having him, and he's looking forward to being there and addressing the audience. But this was great, and I do want to just thank you for imparting all of your wisdom to our viewers, but also uh, Brian has been gracious enough to educate our sales team members. So as they go out to their customers and help uh, their customers in the group practice arena, they've got more knowledge as a result of Brian giving, his, giving up his time to come and educate the team so we could be of more value to our DSO clients and group practice clients. I'm definitely looking forward to your sessions. Thanks for being a great friend to our company and also a great strategic partner that we feel really comfortable referring out our customers to when they need that legal regulatory guidance and help. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate it.